modern era with material abundance, where we can buy anything we want with a click of a button, where our senses are constantly stimulated in all possible ways. Yet, this short-lived pleasure never seems to translate into lasting happiness. Could there be a different way? Could the mysterious wisdom of the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu shed light on cultivating a more joyful life? Lao Tzu is credited with popularizing Taoist philosophy through writing the book Tao Te Ching. Yet his life is still remains somewhat unknown and a, still a mysterious story till today. Lao Tzu lived in a period of constant war around 500 BC, where regional warlords were fighting against each other for land and power. He was a librarian and was very well known for his vast knowledge and wisdom, even in the neighboring countries. At the decline of the Zhao dynasty, Lao Tzu decided to resign and leave his country to live a simple and free life in the wilderness. There is a legendary story about Lao Tzu that people still talk about today. Lao Tzu was riding an ox through the Hangu Pass, and Yin Xi, the commander of the pass, recognized him and insisted on having tea with Lao Tzu so he could learn the wisdom of the Tao. Yin Xi asked, Master, I'm curious how you gained your legendary wisdom. Lao Tzu replied, I claim no wisdom whatsoever. Others may say so because I served as the librarian for King Wu. The Tao is about returning to simplicity, not pursuing knowledge. While I certainly have access to many wonderful books, they are powerless to capture the essence of the Tao. Books are dead things. They contain the words of people long gone. The only way to gain living wisdom from dead books is by applying their words to life. Lao Tzu went on to share some more important principles about cultivating the Tao. As they finished their tea, Lao Tzu got up and was about to leave. Before he left, Yin Shi requested Lao Tzu to write down all the notes on how to cultivate the Tao. Lao Tzu went on to write chapter after chapter, summarizing the important principles of the Tao. And when he was done, he gave the manuscript to Yin Shi, then got on his ox and rode off into the sunset. Where he went, no one knows. That manuscript later, later on became the Tao Te Ching. So what is Tao? The character Tao in modern Chinese means road. So you probably have seen Tao Te Ching being translated as the way. Lao Tzu hasn't provided a definition to the Tao in Tao Te Ching, as he believes Tao cannot be defined in any written or spoken forms. To the Chinese, what is highest, the origin of all things, is nothingness and emptiness. The altogether and determined, the totality of all things, is referred to as Tao. It is equivalent to some Western philosophers have called the Absolute. The Tao is considered as the source and essence of all things. It is simple, desireless, formless, impartial, fluid, without striving, yet supremely content. Water is regarded as the most fitting metaphor for the Tao. It is the softest element on earth, yet it penetrates the hardest rock. It has form, yet it has no form. It greatly nurtures everything it comes to contact with without discrimination or any desire for anything in return. To flow with the Tao, Lao Tzu writes about living a simple life. Here is chapter 12 of the Tao Te Ching. The five colors blind the eye. The five tones deafen the ear. The five flavors dull the mouth. 
racing through the field and hunting make the mind wild. Searching for precious goods leads astray. Therefore the sage attends to the belly and not to the eyes. He rejects the latter and chooses the former. The first few lines describe how excess stimuli leads to sensory overload. The number five here does, means many, not literally five. Having excess confuses and dulls the mind. Pursuing exhilarating stimuli and material goods leads to greed and loss of control. One can become captured by their desires. The last few lines, therefore the sage attends to the belly and not to the eyes. He rejects the latter and chooses the former. Attending to their belly means focusing on one's essential needs and living life with simplicity. The sage lets go of the excess desires and many temptations of the material world, but attends to the inner balance and reaches for the simplicity of the Tao. By doing so, the mind is clear, the senses are sharp, the heart is content. We have the capacity and awareness to be grateful for what we truly have, to greatly appreciate the sensory pleasure rather than be captured by the desires and indulgence. We experimented with the idea of a simple life to different areas in life, where we aimed to remove and simplify rather than to add and accumulate. The first area we focused on was our physical environment. Every few months, we go through all of our clothes, books, documents and household items, let go of what is not essential to our life anymore, donate them to charities and cultivate a clutter-free and cozy living environment. It helps us to know exactly what we have and where they are. The clear space also creates clarity in the mind and the inner peace in the heart. By doing so, we also found that we no longer do impulsive purchases anymore. We are no longer the consumers that are mindlessly influenced by adverts, but to mindfully choose what we decide to invite to our lives. Another area we experimented this idea on was our diet. About four years ago, we decided to take on a challenge to keep the diet as simple as possible, purely based on fresh fruit and vegetables. No meat, no seafood, no carbs, no processed food, no sugar, no dairy, no eggs, no coffee and no alcohol for 10 days. To our surprise, we felt more energetic, healthy and alive. Following which, over the last four years, we gradually became vegan. Nowadays, we occasionally indulge ourselves with a glass of wine or a piece of cake. Because these treats don't happen every day, our palates are very sensitive. We could really appreciate the flavor, the texture, the taste, and the pleasure that come with it. We also felt a lot happier and content by simplifying our desires. We used to be ambitious individuals who were constantly wanting to achieve more. We aspired to become financially successful and felt the constant self-pressure to work and perform. We lived in our imagined future and were never content with where we were in the moment. We were living a life dominated by a desire rather than enjoying the journey that leads us to a sense of fulfillment. By letting go of the desire to be right, to be liked, to be successful, to be important, to be remembered, to be rich, and focusing on the task and the situation at hand, we realized that we didn't have to get anywhere or achieve anything to feel content and fulfilled. We are already there right now. Lao Tzu's guidance of living a simple life and flowing with the Tao is a lesson for modern life, as it seeks nothing external for happiness and cultivates inner peace and contentment. As we continue to live a simple life, attending to the belly and not to the eyes, we may find that we don't lack anything, that we already have everything we truly need. And as the saying goes, flow is life, claim nothing and be free. Mm -hmm.